morning, my name's Liz Wilkins. I'm the community manager here at the Innovation Labs based in Stowmarket. We're more than co-working. Um, yes, we have a co-working space, um, but we are, have been founded by a phenomenal team of entrepreneurs. You've already met Hayden Allen Verco this morning, and you've heard about Orbital Global and the work that they're doing with Vituri. Um, we were founded by Peter Brady, who is the founder and CEO of Orbital and Global and Futuri. And he was joined by Peter Basford and Hermione Way. And the four individuals behind the labs have created an ecosystem and a community of um, entrepreneurs where we really put the business at the heart of what we're trying to achieve here. Now I could prattle on for hours um, about how phenomenal they all are, but I'm not going to. Um, what I would like to do is share really what we're all about. So we launched in November 29. Um, I believe some of you may have had the privilege to have come to our launch party. Remember the days when we could all be in a big room together, um, stood next to each other without masks or um, anti-back. And we launched in November 29. And since then, despite the pandemic, we've been able to successfully grow um, through our innovation, um, enabling entrepreneurship. We've helped our businesses grow significantly and we've facilitated public and private sector partnerships between our members. And we've had some phenomenal feedback. Now I could read this slide out and I could, I could bore you to death with um, some phenomenal stories of innovation, but rather than me talk about what has been achieved, we've um, had the opportunity to invite three of our members to actually come on and join us. So um, I'm delighted to say that we've got Ben Catton from Altham Payments um, coming on to share shortly. Um, they're a fintech business. We've got Shamal Rajapaksi from CAP Certified, um, which is an edtech solution for protecting children online, and Geraint Thomas from Guided Innovation, who's going to talk about care tech for the health and social care sectors. So Without further ado, I'd like to hand you over to Ben Catton. Ben, you have the floor. Cool. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, let me share my screen. Oh, I think I'm starting to share yours. Yeah, and I bear with me a second. There you go. Uh, Okay, cool. Um, right, yeah, cool. So I've been um, working for Open Payments for about eight months now. Um, I basically graduated from, oh, we're on, uh, I graduated from uni uh, university, uh, Coventry University, studying marketing. Um, and ever since then, I've been working here, um, working on some exciting projects in Stone Market for Open and also uh, the new app uh, called Echo Pay. Uh, that's a business to business payment app. Um, so first, I'm just going to start off a bit about Open. Um, so the main main purpose of our business is to reduce the costs that it takes with card payments um, so in the hope to increase sales and improve profits. Um, our customer base is made up of 250 million pounds of card payments uh, processing a year. Um, that's, that's mainly made up of, um, it's mainly made up of wholesalers. Um, we do this through merchant service reviews and uh, smart terminals, which uh, we reduce the costs uh, of their of our customer base of 400,000 annually. Um, but we want to take this one step further as we still think um, our customers are paying too much in car payment fees. Um, and that's why we created EchoPay. Um, it's basically reduced the cost further while also increasing security and improving cash flow because uh, the settlement is instant. Um, so yeah, this is a business to business payment app. Um, so the best way that I thought to show you how it works uh, would be just take you for a payment journey. Um, we've currently got one live on the App Store at the moment called uh, United Wholesale Scotland. Um, they, are, they turn over around £300 million pounds a year. Um, and basically we've created a bespoke app that's branded in with their logo um, that their customers are able to pay with. Um, they're able to pay in three different ways. Uh, the first one is literally the customer making a payment. This is allowing them to pay anywhere at any time for any amount. Um, and we found this to be one of the most popular ways that um, a customer, uh, that their customers want to pay with. Um, the second way is through a QR code. Um, so the app has a built-in uh, QR code scanner uh, that we're able to display a QR code on an invoice at Till or on our new EchoPod system that's a payment terminal that uh, we can give to delivery drivers and that can also be um, put in stores. And then as well as an app, we also provide a dashboard um, for our customers that um, they're able to send 
a payment request directly to the customer's phone that will come through as a notification. Um, both the QR code and the payment request are uh, automated, so the customer uh, doesn't have to type in any payment details. Um, so it makes it really easy um, and also frictionless. Um, so after the three payment methods, they're identical screens. So for this case, for United Wholesale, it shows the branch, uh, the account number, and the amount, and then also the payment type, which is cash and off account. Um, it's all it's basically identical for all three, um, making it easy and recognizable for the customer. Um, and then after that, um, it goes to the bank screen. Uh, so we've got over uh, 30 banks to choose from. Um, and this basically is where the customer uh, finds and locates their banks they use for online or mobile banking. And once selected, they'll be directed to their mobile banking app if they have it downloaded. But if they don't, they'll be taken to a, the, um, their web browser where they can uh, securely log into their online banking. Um, so basically how it works is through an open banking payment initiation service technology. Um, and it's basically an API that calls, um, that EchoPay calls um, to uh, the customer's bank um, that they then authorize the payment that then takes them back to EchoPay for them to confirm the details and then authorize the payment. Um, so once that payment's been made, uh, the customer will get a confirmation uh, message on the app and they'll also receive an email and the business will also receive an email with um, all of the details. Uh, and so the branch that was made, uh, the account number, the amount and the payment type. Um, so this, the reason uh, this is better than just taking car payments is because the settlement is instant and there's no risk of chargeback uh, for the business. Um, it's completely secure because the payment journey is completely on the customer's phone, so no details are shared um, in the payment process. And it's also cost effective, um, so it costs around 60% less than a car payment transaction would. Um, and yeah, so throughout the journey, uh, we've been working with the Innovation Lab um, while EchoPay has been in development and just kind of the feedback from other um, uh, businesses. So we've, there's, around us, we've got people from different um, backgrounds and who has different experiences that have been able to chip in with uh, helping the development of echo pay and getting um, kind of some feedback directly from other people um, regular mentoring for projects um, has given us a different viewpoint um, about projects and also uh, personal development as well and just uh, in general working with other members uh, great networking opportunities as well uh, meeting new different people um, who are, maybe have similar businesses but also that are completely unrelated to what we do um, and then just the location, uh, we have a, our uh, app developer is in London um, and the transport connections. Uh, we're about two minutes walk away from the train station and about an hour and a half uh, to Liverpool Street. Uh, yeah, so thanks. Hope that kind of gives an overview of what we do. Um, I've got uh, LinkedIn uh, if you want to do the networking, as I just said. But yeah, that's it. Thank you. Well, that was a whistle stop tour, Ben. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, um, thank you. And just hold that slide up, Ben, because uh, in case people want to just scan mm. that uh, that code for your LinkedIn. Um, brilliant. Liz, back to you. Thanks, Tim. So next up we have Shamal. So Shamal, if you want to take come to the stage. You have the floor. Thank you. Um, have I not enabled? Can you see me? Not yet. We can't no. see you. We can see your slides, but not your face. All oh, right. Okay. Hey. There. there you are. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Shamal Rajabox. Uh, I'm here to talk about CAP, a tech startup I co founded in 2019. We are a pre-revenue social enterprise on a mission to keep children safe online. So, um, sorry, I should have clicked this button. So, yeah, CAP stands for Child Authentication and Protection. And that's what we do. CAP is a community-led technology solution. It all started because of my son. It was uh, 2018, last day before school, summer holidays. On the way, on the way back, my son asked, if I could play Fortnite with his friends. He was just under six, six years old. Um, I said, yes, I didn't know what it was, uh, what Fortnite was. So came home and did some research before downloading it. I learned that it was not suitable for children under 12. He had to wait another seven years. 
I also learned that Fortnite was teeming with online predators. As you can imagine, my son wasn't happy. He wanted to be cool like his friends and he, he didn't let it go. So I called a couple of dads to see how they have allowed their children to play on Fortnite. One child was using their dad's account and the other was using a fake account the parent has created. So I, I searched for other solutions. There must be other technical solutions, I thought. There are content filters, parental controls that block content and sites, and screen time management tools, but none that's stopped kids from falling prey to groomers hiding behind fake accounts. That's when I realized there was a gap in the market. I explained to my son why he couldn't play Fortnite now, uh, Fortnite now or even after he turned 12, for that matter. I promised him that I'd find a way for him and his friends to play safely when they were old enough. So this is the problem. This is how a multiplayer game or a social media platform look like today. A child can interact with anyone. Anyone can approach a child. As a parent, we don't know who our children play with, chat with, follow or being followed. I thought of sharing some stats at this stage with you to show how bad the situation is, but you'd forget them by the end of this presentation. So last night, I decided to give four and a half minutes of my uh, the time allocated to me to this video, the video created by our charity partner, the Breck Foundation. It's rated 15 and contains upsetting scenes. Essex Place Emergency. Okay. Uh, hello. Um, I need police and a forensic team to my address, please. What do you mean? What's happened? My friend and I got into an altercation, and I'm the only one who came out alive. Are you telling me you've killed somebody? I first met Lewis online. He's my friend. Lewis is my friend. Lewis is my friend. Lewis is a mate. Lewis is my friend. Lewis is Breg's friend. He runs the fastest FPS server I've ever seen. The guys and I play Battlefield with him every day. He's an awesome programmer. He's an awesome programmer. He is an awesome programmer. He's an awesome programmer. He's a good programmer. Lewis lives in New York and has his own apartment. Lewis says he works for the government. Lewis works for the Lewis government. Lewis works for the government. Lewis works for the government. Lewis works for the government. Lewis runs his own business. He says I should quit school and start my own company. He says I've got the right sort of mind. Lewis is a millionaire. Lewis is a millionaire. Lewis is a millionaire. Lewis is a millionaire. <laughs> Lewis is a liar. Lewis says my friends are talking about me behind my back. He says that someone with a brain like mine is wasted on people like them. I'm going to be a programmer like Lewis. Lewis is a liar. Liar. Lewis is a liar. Lewis is OK. Mum and Dad say they're going to take my computer away. They say Lewis is dangerous. We've been friends for over a year now. Lewis says they can't do that. Lewis says they're trying to control me. Lewis is a liar. Liar. Lewis is a liar. Lewis is controlling my son. Lewis says he's ill and needs to hand over his company to me, but we need to meet. He says he'll pay for the taxi. Lewis says I'm really gifted and he trusts me. Lewis is a liar. Liar. Lewis is a liar. Liar. Lewis is a liar. Lewis is my friend. Are you telling me you've killed somebody? Yes, I am. On the 17th of February, 2014, Lewis Danes, an online friend who Breck believed was a real friend lured him to his flat where he was brutally murdered. We tried to convince him that he was in danger. If only Breck had believed us, my beautiful boy would still be alive today.
Hi. Uh, I hope you could hear that too. Right. It's a, it's a, it's difficult not to be moved by that. We have to take this problem seriously. We need to carry on and act fast. We can't, we can't identify everyone online, but we can identify children online. We believe that identifying children as real children is the key to protect them online. That's the concept driving our technology. So in a nutshell, this is how CAP works. CAP enables parents to authenticate their children with the support of schools. They can then, the parents can then verify the children's individual social media and gaming accounts, set safety preferences for each of those accounts. Not only that, parents can also manually verify adults and organizations safety interact with their child because uncles and aunts, older siblings and organizations can't be authenticated by schools. Finally, CAP enables digital platforms to create a walled garden for those authenticated children. So this is how CAP has enabled the same social media platform that you saw earlier to create a safer environment for the children using their platform. Children can't cross paths with predators, groomers, scammers, and even bullies hiding behind fake accounts. But an older sibling or non-adults can interact with the child as long as they have parental permission to do so via CAP. I have to stress that we don't share any information with the platforms. CAP is a tokenized system, so we don't hold children's data and children's privacy is protected all the time. If you remember at the beginning, I mentioned that CAP is community-led technology. That's because we need schools, parents, and digital platforms to work together to make this happen. This is where store market innovation labs come in. I'm, I'm quite so grateful to them, uh, to the team at the labs for the help they have given us so far. I'm grateful for all the introduction they have made for getting us on the Instanglian Daily Times for the opportunities like this one to raise awareness most importantly for the community they have created with like-minded entrepreneurs. CAP is MVP ready. We have trials the co-authentication technology with a couple of schools successfully. We have a small team of four trademarked and patent pending. We're currently looking for funding and working to build our community with schools, social media platforms and multiplayer games. So if you want to know more, if you share our purpose, if you can help with connections to schools and digital platforms, please get in touch. This QR code will get you to my LinkedIn page or you can visit capcertified.com. You'll also be helping me to keep the promise that I have made to my son. Take care, thank you. Hey, thanks, Jamal. Very good, very powerful uh, and a real reminder of the, um, the downsides of innovation. Um, uh, safety, security, particularly for young people and vulnerable people, uh, always has to be borne in mind. And um, I mean, we've talked today mainly about the positives and uh, CAP certified is a positive story, right? So you're doing some fantastic work. Uh, I'm sure there'll be lots of people who'll be very interested in, in finding out more. Um, so, uh, and hopefully you can stick around for our, our, our panel a little bit later, Shamal, but um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. And now I think we have, last but not least, Geraint. Uh, hi, everybody. So, yeah, I'm up next, but just after that, anybody else want to go instead? No? All right. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll go with that one. You've got, you've got a tough slot, Geraint. Brilliant. Geraint. Wonderful. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, would would anybody would somebody mind making me spotlight? Um, I don't have a presentation. But it'd be nice if if I, I I've kind of got attention on me. Is that all right? Can everybody see me? Yeah, we can see you. You're a spotlight. Yeah. Can you see the nose hairs? Because I really have spotlight and everything. No. Okay. Okay. Um, hi everybody. So my name's Guy Thomas. I founded a company called Guided Innovation Limited. We try and inspire social care organisations to solve their problems using cool tech. And there's a lot of cool tech out there. Um, that the sector I love just is not aware of. Likewise, there's a lot of really bad technology out there. 
um, which my sector tends to suffer from procuring by mistake. Um, so I am geek. I'm very much a geek. Uh, I, I love the latest technologies, particularly ones that aren't invented yet. Um, I'll just quickly say, for the example, artificial intelligence, I don't believe is invented yet. I think machine learning is very capable. If you ask a piece of machine learning a question, they're going to give you a very probable answer. If you ask a artificial intelligence a question, the only answer they should be giving is piss off. Uh, that's true intelligence. Um, in my opinion. And I, I try and demystify this for social care companies. Why social care? I could have chosen any other sector and earned more money, um, but uh, it, it's kind of where my heart is. So I work uh, in organizations and I set up about two years ago. Um, so I decided I need to help as many care companies as I possibly can. I couldn't do that employed by individual companies. So I set up my own company. Woohoo! Uh, I waved goodbye to sick pay and paid annual leave. Okay, it's fine, it's fine. But hey, I'm my own boss. I can do what I want. I can decide it, woohoo. Uh, COVID happened at me. Um, so that was a very challenging time. I worked in the sector, which suddenly meant I got very busy. The idea of furlough was a lovely idea for me, but um, it, it meant I got very busy. And, and the labs, uh, and I do work out of the innovation labs here in Stowe Market, was a bit of a lifeline for me. They enabled me to continue working through the pandemic as a key worker. And it was quite profound. You know, um, I stopped helping care companies get their payroll right um, and instead worked. You know, I did an awful lot of work, sadly, around um, providing technology solutions so that people could say goodbye to their loved ones without going out to the care home because they were not allowed to go out and see them. Um, and suddenly, if you imagine some of the most vulnerable people with severe and acute autism or learning disabilities, a lot of their coping mechanisms is to go outside. Suddenly that was robbed from many of them across the UK. So again, I spent an awful lot of my time working with sensor technology and IoT. Uh, we equipped people's flats um, and bedrooms and apartments with sensor technology to alert us if anything was happening. And sadly, you know, if your coping mechanism is to go outside and you're only allowed to do it once a day, it meant you know there was a lot of behavioral challenges, a lot of people self-harming and injuries and, and things like that. So we did we did an awful lot of work in that space, which was phenomenally rewarding. So what happened then? Six months into setting up a company, deep in the middle of COVID, uh, a company looked over the fence and saw Guide Innovation. They were a consultancy that worked in restaurants and hospitality. So you can imagine how fun, much fun they were having during COVID. And they decided they needed a new vertical, social care and healthcare sounded a good one. So they procured my business. Woohoo! Uh, six months in, uh, I got my business bought and I suddenly became a director of a much larger organisation. Um, and which worked with, with larger companies across different sectors, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Six months later, the founder of that other company became a millionaire overnight when he sold another company that he worked in. And waking with the knowledge that he didn't need to work anymore, he decided, I don't need to work anymore. Um, so he handed the company back to me um, and, I, and I moved it forward. So what happened then that was pivotal for me? I could have gone back into employed work. There was still innovation to be had in the sector. I still had that passion to work with as many care companies as I possibly could. So um, what I did is one thing I certainly learned, and that was I brought on a partner. I brought on another director to work with me. I gave some equity away and brought somebody else on the journey. And that was the smartest move I'd ever made. Uh, talk about grading the sum of your parts. Me and that other individual can achieve four people's work. We bounce off each other. It's somebody to check my thinking with. These big decisions for the sector, for technology, for my company, I can make with somebody, which was really, really empowering and fantastic. COVID tailed off. Things got a bit more relaxed. Um, technology got, got better. If you think about it, nobody used Zoom uh, or Microsoft Teams beforehand. Lots of care organizations didn't have intranets. They do now. Uh, and I, you know, I'm really lucky that I've been able to bring that to a lot of companies. Um, but now I'm getting to do more innovation. Uh, the company's grown. We've benefited from the UK government's kits, kickstart scheme quite severely. I've got three kickstarters with me at the moment. I'm hiring two more. Um, and you know, I've, I've grown now. I've got nine employees, which I couldn't have imagined. Um, oh crap! I've got nine employees. I've got a salary bill that I can't pay, that I, that I need to pay um, every month. So suddenly for the first time, my company has got to a position where I have to make a sale. Up till now, I've been, it's been nice to make a sale, but I've been able to bob along changing my salary in accordance with what I was doing. But now suddenly it's, 
yeah, I've got to do it. And that's terrifying. So yeah, guided innovation is certainly at a pivotal point right now. Um, I'm overstretched. I've hired, I've got fantastic individuals working for me. Um, and we need more sales. So we're trying to work with more software companies, more startups, more um, tech firms to try and inspire them to actually, you know, don't, don't help Tesco's position there ice creams when the weather's hot. Uh, please use your innovations and data to help social care organizations so that fathers can get back to their families. Um, so yeah, that, that's the space I'm working in. Um, uh, a quick nod again to the Innovation Labs. I only came here for good coffee and Wi-Fi, uh, which I got, um, but I didn't I anticipate the importance actually of networking, of having mentors and people around you that know what they're doing. It's been phenomenal to have people around me that inspire me. So all the other entrepreneurs that are based here inspire me every time I speak to them. Um, and kind of the mentors that we have here at the labs, they've been really good. My worst thing, I'm very much, I like shiny things. I'm very much squirrel. Um, and they're very good at kind of going, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Bring it back, does that help your business? Um, which is invaluable advice um, and things like that. But um, yeah, that, that's me. Um, it's been a pleasure having your attention for five minutes. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Geraint. Let me just see if I can. I can't start my video, Tim. So, but nobody needs to see my face. Um, it's all right. I'll figure out how to do that. <laughs> thank you. Um, so, thank you, Ben, Shamal, and Geraint for stepping in um, and and talking and really sharing about your businesses. But you know, we we do have more than three members. There's over 50 members of the Innovation Labs. Um, here are some of them on screen. And we've got some phenomenal success stories. Now, a couple of our members have been working on major product launches, um, one with a company based out of Silicon Valley. Um, not, it's not a fruit company, if you know the Forrest Gump reference, but it is a major tech company working on their product launch. We've had another one of our members working on the product launch for Sky Glass, which was announced a couple of weeks ago, which has been phenomenal. Um, Tim, you talked at the beginning about how the importance of um, robotics and surgery, DR UK, have done a, a world first. They've done some remote um, robotic surgical training um, and so a program for um, surgeons in the Caribbean, in Tr Trinidad and Tobago, um, so they can do laparoscopy. So that, I think that's the right pronunciation. Laparoscopy, I can't say it. Surgery where it's keyhole surgery. That's um, a better use. We've had um, Tom of Reset and Chill. Um, he pivoted his entire business at the start of the pandemic, and he was recently on the television um, showcasing his camper vans. Emily from Virtually There Studio, who I believe is um, also with us today, has co-curated mixed reality exhibitions for local artists. Westview IT um, are winners of the Mid Suffolk and Baber Customer Service Award, and they've grown, um, their story is very similar to Geraint's. You know, they've grown from a team of one to a team of five since joining the labs, and they now have actually grown to the point where we've actually kicked them out, and they've got their own office space um, upstairs in Wolfside House. Um, Moss HR and Sasa Marketing have also relocated um, from working from home to brand new offices as a result of the business growth that they've achieved. Um, and one of our successes that you've probably already heard of is the virtual high street. It was created in response to the pandemic and within 90 days, Ellis of Q Technology launched a solution to help high street businesses go online. It's got, they've got over 350 businesses um, on the platform. It's um, across Stowe Market, Sudbury, Hadley, Needham Market and I. And recently they won a public sector award for that project. Now, you may be thinking, well, that's all great, Liz, but, you know, how does, how does this all happen? Um, we have an online programme. Um, obviously, you know, when the pandemic hit, um, people couldn't physically come to the space, so we um, ensured that all of our activity went online. We believe that it's really important for our members to practice public speaking, and thank you for giving us the opportunity all to practice our public speaking today, Tim. So we have Pitch Club on a Monday, where you can um, practice your presentations. We have stand-up calls on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, which is a rapid-fire discussion. You get accountability, you get support, you get to hear what's going on across the network and across the region. Um, for example, we, um, you know, we've 
we've been really instrumental in helping our members get access to grants during um, the pandemic. And I can't, I don't know the exact number, but we've um, helped our members get in, in excess of £100,000 worth of grant funding um, over the last 12 months. We also invite experts um, to run sessions to educate and inform our members um, in our lightning talk programmes. If you've got, um, if you want to talk to our members, just contact me. Um, I'm always looking for phenomenal speakers for our Thursday sessions at 12. We have an online academy programme. Um, as has been alluded to, we, we, we support our members with PR. Um, we've, our members have had literally had tens, tens of thousands of pounds worth of press coverage as a result of the PR support that they've had from Hermione. And of course, you know, the thing that you can't put money on is they've had access to one-to-one -to -one coaching with our founders. We all heard Hayden talk earlier um, and he shared his, um, you know, their journey of in entrepreneurship. So we're all, you know, able to learn from the experience um, of the people that have gone before us. And for that, we're incredibly um, grateful. You know, what we actually do, the thing that we never really talk about, you won't find it on a website, um, is that we help our members to be even more ambitious. We help them to, to take calculated risks, to make mistakes, but learn fast. Um, we push them to scale um, and also to believe in themselves. You know, it's a lonely business being an entrepreneur, but when you're a member of the community here at the Innovation Labs, you're never alone again. Um, and of course, we connect them to wonderful people like you who can support and help them. Um, if you want to find out more about us, we are based in Stone Market. Um, my details are on screen. By all means, give me a call. Um, thank you very much for the time and the opportunity to talk to you all today. Back to you, Tim. Thank you.